Good morning from San Esteban de la Sierra. It's Monday morning, 11 a.m., and our aim is to get, at the very least, into France. I don't care how far we get in, but we must get into France. So if by the end of today we haven't, it's a failure. Thank you for your comments on the illegality of the trailer in the last video. Noted, acted upon, tyre has now gone to a scrapyard, so that's disappeared. That won't be killing Monica and I if we get into a head-on crash, and Empty, empty, half empty, and about a quarter empty. So we should be about five kilos below the legal weight. So there'll be no law breaking today. I think we've got maybe 400 miles or so to cover today. So we've had a look at the forecast. I almost can't believe it because it's so pleasant. It's about 21, 22 degrees here. It says it could get up to about 35 degrees in mid Spain. So it'd be interesting to see what it's really like, but we've got no time to waste. Let's hit the road. a risk we found well monica found a really good looking restaurant kind of on the way just with a five minute detour off the motorway we're right in northern spain now in burgos but the restaurant is in the absolute capital of the town and when you come into one of these multi-story car parks you have no idea how tight the turns are going to be so that was a complete lottery luckily it was very easy and this is city center parking and of course you don't need to worry about having to pay twice because you only need one ticket to get in. So that's a brilliant result. We're going to go for lunch now, I think. 3.30. We're fairly on track, actually. Yeah. Grab a bite to eat and then probably, what do we think? Two or three hours driving after that? Yeah, three more hours. Okay. Probably three more driving, three more hours driving after that. But everything holding up beautifully well. It breaks up the journey so well when you just come off the motorway and go to an actual village because usually if it were just me I would be driving along as fast as I could, pull over at a service station, have a disgusting sandwich that I don't actually enjoy and then back on the road. But because of Monica and she likes travelling in a little bit more luxury, she finds the nice places to eat. So we stop off, we get to stretch the legs, find beautiful places like this and if Monica's found the right spot we actually get a tasty bite to eat. So. It just makes the journey more enjoyable, yes, doesn't it? absolutely. It's really nice. And all of these towns in Spain, they're so beautiful. It's actually about three o'clock and it's so quiet so as quiet. well, isn't yeah. it? That feels great. Completely full now. We're heading off to the south of France. We've just booked accommodation, which is about 15 minutes across the border into France. 
we've had a message from the accommodation and they said last check-in is 7 p.m. I mean they said it in French and my French is fairly useless but I think they said last check-in 7 p.m. it's now 4.30 and it's 2 hours 45 minutes to get to France meaning that we will get there about 20 minutes after the last check-in so it'll be interesting to see what happens I'm sure they'll be fine with it they usually are um, one other thing to mention We've now gone the whole way from the southernmost point of Spain up to very nearly now the northernmost point. We haven't had one payage, we haven't had one toll road, we haven't paid one cent to use these very, very good Spanish roads. But that, I'm sure, is all about to change with the notoriously expensive French motorway. So, we need to make the most of the last bit of this free motoring. I don't know if there's a Mongol rally or something about to start with Renault 4s, but this is now the third fully kitted out, expedition ready Renault 4 that we've seen bombing along the motorway here. All have been very slightly different. This is a, an estate version, but they all look like they're set to travel across the world. Just see if I can, it's actually going quite quickly, I'll see if I can catch up here. Look at them! What an amazing <laughs> sight! Incredible, and the French, they're all French. Look, oh my God! Wow! <laughs> love to know, if anyone knows, if there's a, a big event for those. You want to me, join it? Oh, I'd love to join, I'd love to. <laughs> With Fiat? Yeah, get the Fiat involved. <laughs> Again, a town in the southwest of France, just on the edge of the Pyrenees. We've got this one bedroom kind of studio apartment with kitchenette, 72 pounds. It is in the most beautiful little French town. Ascain, population 4,000 right over there. This is on the edge and it is just everything that you'd want in a beautiful French village. You've got a little boulangerie there. You've got immaculately kept houses and buildings, but I'll get to that in a bit. This is the property, very nice, beautifully decorated. Juliet balcony there, kitchenette area here. Monica, go and just show you a bit of the bathroom there. Oh, and you can, I don't know if you can uh, hear that breeze in the microphone. You need that through breeze coming it's through. But it's, day. it's, I think it's, it's about 10.30. It feels like it's about 30 degrees already. And have a look out. If you can squeeze through there, Monica, at that Juliet balcony there. Leading out into the hills, seating area downstairs. And I think, I think Monica did a bit of B-roll just coming in last night because the actual building itself is just, it's stunning, isn't it? it? Is it's beautiful. a really beautiful building. So we're going to go downstairs now, grab a coffee and then hit the road. But before we do, I think we're going to enjoy the local area bit because it's so beautiful. It's not much better than a beautiful French village. So we'll make the most of it. Love it. My woman. 
France is so damn classy. This is the town of Saint-Jean-de-Luz and we didn't really aim for this town, it just happened to be the town near where our accommodation is. And this is the North Atlantic or the Bay of Biscay actually. Monica did dip her feet in it. Not the warmest, but no. I don't think the Atlantic's famous for warm sea, but everything about it, the town itself, immaculate, so classy. All of the people there, the market is bustling. You've got Vespers whizzing around the place, classy old vintage bicycles. Beautiful white sand beach, lovely bay here, and look at the buildings around that just surround this bay here. Everywhere around, just with some green around the edges. The whole place is, it's really nice. In fact, so nice, Monica has started looking at properties to rent <laughs> out here. It is that nice. Stunning place. We're gonna have to head off because we've got such a long drive, but we could easily stay here for a week or so. Good morning from mid-France. Right, little update. The Fiat and trailer have been completely spot on, not a hiccup, just easy as you like. It feels like the Fiat could just do this for an eternity with no issues. Apologies for the sweating. It is stinking hot here. It's 10.30, we're in mid-France. We're two and a half hours south of Paris and we are importantly five and a half hours south of Calais and that's 420 kilometers. Aim for the day, we have to get to Calais, then get the ferry from Calais to Dover in England and then drive the final two and a half hours from Dover in England up to Ipswich. We stayed the night last night here and I wanted to say the name but I cannot remember it and my French pronunciation is not good enough so so hot. So I will include all the details in the written description, but this was, I think, about £74 a night. It's exactly west of Nantes, to give you an idea, on the map. The building may only be 19 years old. However, it was built on the site of a French chateau from the 18th century that was destroyed during World War II. And it has, well, would you expect any less from the grounds of a French chateau, or an ex-French chateau. It's got beautiful, just endless space with the grounds. And once you leave the UK, you really do realize that, you know, space is very much at a premium in the UK. Land costs a huge amount because there isn't much of it, and there's a huge population relative to the space. Get into France and Spain, and suddenly there's so much an abundance of open space. It almost feels limitless, just, Everywhere you look, beautiful rolling hills and scenery, birds singing everywhere. This is the property right here. That's our balcony. I'll take you upstairs to show you. And probably we've got about 15 minutes left here until we need to check out, hit the road. So I'll take you inside and show you, but it's a really, really nice place in stunning French countryside. It's a lovely part of the country here. And here is the apartment we're staying. In fact, I'll go in there in a second, number five, but just to give you an idea of what it's like inside. That's the lounge area, free teas and coffees, things like that. 
communal seating area and a spa through there. Views out onto the garden. I probably should say the land. And in we come. Right, let's start with the left-hand side because it is big, this apartment. So storage on the left-hand side, lamp there. I mean, antiques everywhere. And they've clearly put in some effort and been to a lot of little French antiques markets to pick up all of these things. So you've got a single bed here, rugs throughout, old paintings everywhere, little chair here, beautiful little antique storage there. And as is the case with every room here, view out to the garden coming through here. This seems to be a common theme for French properties. Separate loo room or separate toilet room, exactly the same with this one as the last one. Then you come through here to the main bathroom. Twin sinks, shower, and big window out looking onto the garden, the grounds with that's how we had coffee this morning. Beautiful. And Monica, just down there, enjoying the last few minutes here, but such a stunning view. And look at that weather. Okay, come through here. Little touches everywhere into the bedroom, which is gigantic. So I'll come into the corner as much as I can just to show you the size of this room. It gives an incredible feeling of luxury having it oversized. TV in the corner, that's a proper smart TV that works with, importantly, and that's a rarity, working Wi-Fi, proper Wi-Fi here, that's a big deal. Lovely paintings area everywhere, gigantic bed, and the thing that makes it, these huge open doors. We had our breakfast here in the morning, looking out onto that view. There's Monica again. Right, let's go down and pay for the night. <laughs> You can see in the distance the white cliffs of Dover. So whatever happens now, the Fiat will have made it. It will have done its job, even if it breaks down <laughs> two meters after getting off the ferry. It's got us back to the UK. It's got over 190,000 miles on the clock. It's done one and a half thousand miles to get us here. And it hasn't spluttered. It hasn't given us any hiccup, any cause for concern. It's powered along the motorway at any speed I ask of it. It has been a phenomenal. I trust it going around the world, honestly. Right, because we're going to get in when it's pitch black, I wanted to do the most uh, or the main bit of the wrap up right now and just go through a few of the costs. How much does it cost 
to get a car with a trailer and that's key the trailer how much does it cost to get from Tenerife to the UK before I get to that we've been driving around on the Bonneville and the Fiat with UK plates for eight months now to Tenerife in Tenerife and all the way back again and not once have we ever been pulled over by any police I know sometimes you know maybe the French police have a reputation of some people think targeting UK drivers really don't think that's the case we've never had any issues at all so before I get on to the exact costings I almost threw up while driving because I asked Monica to check the ferry prices for the Fiat and the trailer to get onto a ferry only a 90 minute ferry crossing back to Dover Monica checked the prices and honestly I almost crashed into the central reservation while throwing <laughs> up over myself the cost of this 90 minute trip 300 pounds. <laughs> 300 pounds? 300 pounds? I mean, it's a lovely ferry, but that is complete madness. I, I had to check to get some relativity. Without the trailer, it would have cost us 150 pounds. So it's double the price to book. You have to bear that in mind if you buy a trailer and you do what we've done. You will pay 150 pounds extra or double to get onto this ferry. So that's worth th thinking about. Right. How much did it cost from our apartment in Tenerife to back in the UK? Hotels, four different hotels. Interestingly, the Spanish ones were cheaper, 46 pounds and 52 pounds. The French ones were closer to 77 pounds. Mm -hmm. The total for hotels over four nights, 232 pounds. That's very good. Very good value, isn't yeah. it? Ferries. The Tenerife to mainland Spain ferry, which I thought was ridiculously expensive, £530. I now think that's the bargain of the century <laughs> after getting on this one hour ferry. This one, £300. That is £830 in ferries. Again, for us Brits who live on an island, if we want to do journeys like this, that's a huge cost. That means that we have spent, Monica and I, to get, and this is purely on ferries only, to get to Tenerife and back eight months ago and now, over one and a half thousand pounds on ferries that is not an insignificant amount of money so bear that in mind tolls southern spain to northern spain 17 pounds southern france to northern france 87 pounds petrol now petrol costs 171 pounds to get back here to the uk the last fill up i did in tenerife cost 28 pounds and the last fill up I did in France cost for the exact same amount of petrol 58 pounds a little bit over double the cost so the total if I add up the hotels the ferries the tolls and the fuel 1,000 330 pounds in total that is not including food and bear in mind you'll be spending a noticeable amount extra on food because you're going to be on the road all the time eating at service stations but 1330 pounds including the four nights stay in the accommodation so it's effectively turned this into a holiday it's not bad is it's it not bad. i'm i'm pleasantly surprised with that considering the heart attack i just had for this ferry so that's it 1330 total cost we made it, but was there really any doubt at all? The Fiat's now on 190,600 miles. We've done 1,698 miles from our old apartment in Tenerife. Everything was spot on perfect. It was a breeze to do. We traveled now. I think we're at just eight hours from having traveled for six days solid. Of course, we spread it out massively, which if you've got the time, I hugely recommend because it actually turned the whole thing into a holiday. It was incredibly fun. Hugely recommend it. Thank you so much to everyone for coming along with us on this adventure. We hugely appreciate it. We're about to get back. I think Monica's mum has cooked us a Lithuanian dish that we can <laughs> gorge before we go to bed. And I will end it with a fun fact. The average MPG for the Bonneville is 45, 45 MPG. This Fiat, for the entire 1,600 mile journey, averaged 44 MPG. One MPG less than the Bonneville, and it's had to tow all of this, 
when all the Bonobo has to do is tow or is to carry its 200 kilo weight. That's it. We'll end it there. Thanks so much for coming along and we'll see you in the next one.